Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I would show no here, but to give you another Mortal Kombat mobile video. So in this video, I want to make an introductory guide for new players, people that are kind of starting the game, people that are progressing in the roster, and those of you guys that are not loaded with diamond characters. Now, there are 10 things that I feel a new player should do in Mortal Kombat Mobile. The most important thing always for a new player is to farm coins. The reason for that is that there are two special packs that are super important for new players. The first one being the silver pack. This is what you're going to be opening until you get some silver decently upgraded. For veteran players, this could also be a cheap source of getting the support cards that cost a million coins when they're Fusion 10. But that's something we'll talk about more later on. It's also a gateway to the 70,000 coin equipment pack. In my opinion, the best ways to get said coins is by completing battle mode, by completing challenges, and by completing faction wars. All three of those game modes are a great source of coins. You can also farm the towers that are out, the Nightmare and the Tower of Horror, and you should be able to get a good amount of coins from that. You can get five fights total, but 15 all together by refreshing for a total of 400 souls a day. But again, that's something more for veteran players. If you're new to the game, I probably recommend not refreshing. So the second thing that is super important for new players that we just talked about a minute ago, these silver packs. I'm going to show you guys the silver characters and why it's important to buy silver packs. So as you can see by the strength of the silver cards, some of these characters have upwards of 35,000 health and 22,000 damage. And this is without feats of strength because silver cards don't have access to feats of strength. Now they do have access to the support card so you can see that my Kenshi is at 18% health damage and 120% recovery. In the end game of things, when you're working on support cards, this is what you're going to want to worry about. But early on, you're not going to want to worry about upgrading specials unless you have like a really good character like Kenshi that is totally worth maxing out. But if we're comparing some of the stats on the gold characters, let's take a look at some of the gold characters at Fusion 4, like Tanya, Fusion 5, Triborg. Granted, they're low level, but they're comparable to gold cards. Or we can even look at a Fusion 7 Triborg, and Kenshi actually gains 40% attack and health not represented by the sheet in stats. So if you can get a high rank Kenshi, that's going to be better than most goals. Another thing that is super important every single day, make sure that you do your objectives. You have 21 souls available through all your objectives as long as you can do it daily. For a brand new player, 50,000 battle rating in Faction Wars might not be as easy as it seems. However, once you get 50,000 battle rating, you're good for the entire season. I'm sure it's a glitch and it'll get fixed, but that is currently the way it works. Now, as I talked about earlier, so as I talked about earlier, getting all of your support cards up to Fusion 5 is optimal because that is when silver packs actually cost less than Fusion the support cards. If you go all the way up, it's going to cost you up to a million coins. Getting up to Fusion 6 is 100,000 then 250, then 500,000, then a million. I think I'd rather open up 10, 20, 30 support card packs, unless it's like a Scorpion, a Sub-Zero, or maybe a Katana. Somebody that has six versions of a card, I could justify spending a few more coins on that. While gear is overall more important, this is still critical. If you're sitting on millions of coins, you should probably upgrade all of your support cards to five before gear. Now, the fifth thing that is really important are these challenges every single week. These challenges are a great source of coins. The silver packs you also get for free for doing the fourth difficulty of both challenges. So it's like 70,000 coins worth of silver packs you don't have to pay for. And if you get a silver pack, that could be hundreds of thousands of coins that you don't have to spend. Super important to do the challenges. While Elder Difficulty is still a royal pain in the ass, keep in mind, it is a good source of coins. You do get a free gear pack. You also get a free gold pack if you can complete the third difficulty. And you get a couple hundred more souls, which are going to be essential for refreshing towers. Now, the sixth thing that is super important to do 
is make sure that every single week you get at minimum combatant two the reason for that is you get a blood ruby pack which guarantees a gold challenge character card there are some really good challenge character cards like classic melina triborg sub-zero goro there's some Kenshis that are really good, Elder God Kenshi, Thunder God, and Dark Raiden that are really good challenge characters. Even Kraken Reptile could be annoying in certain situations. You also have a small chance of getting Gold Smoke once you get to Silver 2. If you can get all the way up to Contender Elite, which as you can see is about 2 million points in this faction and 1.3 million just to get up there, you have a decent chance of getting diamond characters. You have an 18% chance of a diamond and a 70% chance to get a gold challenge character. If you can get all the way up to legend, you have you have a 100% chance of avoiding challenge characters. Now, obviously, this is for like the whales or the people that have too much time on their hands. Just absolutely ridiculous. Now, I feel that if you're in the top 100, this is my personal opinion. They should just eliminate the challenge character cards. I think this is where you should have gold smoke as the highest reward and then make the diamonds a higher chance once you get up there. I think this is better because then you have a 53% chance of getting gold smoke and you have a 27% a chance of getting the diamonds. And then I think the diamonds should go up from there. If you can get in the top 100, like in master rank, I don't think gold challenge characters should even exist because you put out a lot of time and effort and to get a gold challenge character is just stupid. If you get a diamond, let's say Liu Kang from last season, it's better than getting a challenge character. So the seventh thing that you should learn once you have a decent roster like mine is learn what you can handle in Survivor. Also make sure you pay special attention to the bonuses and the bonuses I'm talking about are people like Sonya Blade, Tanya, Shao Kahn so it looks like this season is leaning towards Outworld so the more Outworld characters you have the more points you can score but also build your team around what you think you can handle so for example Infernal Scorpion with two random gold characters should easily be able to handle normal difficulty. I don't recommend putting anybody in hard that doesn't have a way to heal or if you're not using maxed out gold characters and obviously if you're running the dream team of like Raven's Melina Classic Liu Kang you could probably handle Elder difficulty with a couple outworlds to get a little bit of a bonus and you're fine. But as a new player you probably want to sit on normal difficulty because you're still going to get a lot of points with a 3x multiply and this is why people are getting like a million points in faction where it's easily in the first day now probably the most important thing for a new player to do every single hour that you're able to play the game is quest i don't care if you're watching tv get on and do your quest for an hour do your quest for eight hours now i recommend doing the nether realm quest if your roster is capable of handling it especially when it comes to eight hour quest as you're seeing, the 8-hour quests in the Outworld are giving me 15 souls. But watch what happens when we do an 8-hour quest in the Nether Realm, which we didn't actually set up. But you would get like 25 to 28 souls. And if you do the Hour Quest, Quest 35, Quest 39, and Quest 21, you will guarantee 27 souls an hour. This is also why the packs have such a horrible drop rate because it's so easy to get 270 300 souls a day for a four percent chance to get a character you want and a 96 percent chance to get what you don't want if you feel that you can handle the nether realm quest my infernal scorpion can the first couple chapters are not that hard like even quest 66 is not that hard there's some other quests that aren't that bad quest 71 isn't that bad quest 72 isn't that bad Run them in quest. You're going to get a couple more souls. And if you're not actively playing the game for 10 hours a day, like some of the people are getting 10 million in faction wars, go and run them in quest. Finally, once you have some souls amounted, I recommend buying the gold packs. And I'm talking the 150 soul gold packs. The reason why I recommend this pack is because as a brand new player, you're going to need characters that can run challenges. So let's take, for example, 
Characters that are in the gold pack. I don't think there's a katana in the gold pack anymore. But let's take some characters that are in the gold pack. You can see Inferno Scorpion is one of them. Let's also put in Balance Kenshi as another good character out of the gold pack that I highly recommend farming for. Now obviously this challenge would require a katana. I only have Mournful and Classic. A lot of people are probably going to be running Classic Katana in order to complete the challenge if you're a brand new player. And that's fine. Also Shaolin Kung Jin is a really good gold pack character because it'll make martial artists start with one bar power. If you don't have Hellspawn Scorpion to start at 1.5 bars at power, Shaolin Kung Jin is the next best thing. And who says you can't run both with another martial artist and then your whole team just starts at three bars of power. So the 10th thing that I recommend, find a friend that owns Mortal Kombat 11 or go buy a copy for about 20 bucks because that's all the regular version of Mortal Kombat 11 is worth. Then go buy the new upgrade that's supposed to be coming out in November. Because every single day, you will get five souls just for logging in Mortal Kombat 11 on console. Alright, so as you can see, I had to refresh my client, but I logged into Mortal Kombat 11 on my PC. You can also use a Nintendo Switch, a PlayStation 4, an Xbox One, or Google Stadia. I'm pretty sure it also has the console link. And every single day, all you have to do is log into Mortal Kombat on one of your consoles and you'll get a free five souls every single day for life. So that's basically 150 souls average every single month for just logging into the game. It's not a lot, but every soul adds up. Just like if you get four souls out of that daily pack, every soul adds up. And if you're too cheap to actually pay the $20, you can probably get a friend that owns the game to log in off your console, check in daily so you can get the five souls. It's not a big deal. The 40 souls that you get for the first 30 days of logging in, plus the free diamond character, make it totally worth doing. So I hope that this little guide for helping out new players helps you out and makes it a little bit easier for you to get into Mortal Kombat Mobile. Understand, you're not going to get a roster like this overnight. And this isn't even that great of a roster. This is a free-to-play roster. This roster took several months to acquire from completing challenges and trying to push up, struggling in Tower of Horror, the Lin Kuei Tower, and then I kind of just gave up after that. But you get a lot of challenge characters just from pushing up in the tower. And you can see all the diamond characters that I refuse to spend money on and all the diamond characters that I refuse to spend souls on because let's face it, these towers are a giant money pit. Thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you guys in the live streams. I hope to see you guys in more of my videos. And if this guide has helped you out, make sure to subscribe, leave a donation, or give me your Twitch Prime sub. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. www.youtube.com slash Hollywood Show now. Subscribe, bitches!